Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This one comes from a patron, and he is Nat Pike, W8NAT. Okay, and uh, he has a message which he sent via Patreon, and uh, here is the message. Hello, Mr. Kastler. I'm a longtime watcher and also patron for about a year now. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Very much appreciate all of the time and effort you put in to help keep this hobby thriving and to help educate newer hams. I have an antenna question for that uh, maybe you can help with, so I'm submitting it as a possible Ask Dave question. And so I'll put it in that folder. It regards antenna tuners versus antenna loading. For this discussion, I'm talking about using a remote antenna tuner at the antenna feed point as opposed to in the shack which is a good way of doing it if you're doing a long wire or something like that uh, icom yesu and i believe kenwood all make them also you can get them from ldg you can get them uh, to where you control it through the coax or you can get them to where it needs uh, separate control cables my understanding of an antenna tuner is that it uses a combination of capacitance and reactance. Okay, capacitive reactance and inductive reactance. They're opposite each other. To balance out mismatches caused by a non-resonant antenna length. Yes, or feeding a resonant antenna at the end or off-center fed or something like that. Seems to me that loading an antenna with coils or capacitance hats is doing something similar. Yes, you can trim an antenna. Let's just go through that one little part right there. Um, here's an antenna that's too short, vertical. You can put a capacitance hat on it just by putting some cross pieces on it. Or you can put a coil at the base and feed it against ground. This is... Uh, ground here and feed it right here and feed it with coax because this is an unbalanced system and doing this either way this is called the loading coil which allows you to make this shorter now the problem with that is that it be, this this reactance becomes part of the antennas reactants and it will raise the Q which is the quality factor And this is a unitless ratio of resistances. And for whenever you add reactants in here, you start to raise the Q, which means that this is sort of means high Q means uh, low bandwidth, and low Q means high bandwidth. And so if you want the thing to cover the whole, um, the whole band, if you put in loading like this, you may not be able to cover the whole band. This is called a capacitance hat. And they do similar things. They add reactants uh, to the antenna. Now, his question is uh, interesting. Okay, um, it seems to me that loading an antenna with coils or capacitance hats is shortening the antenna it when you do this it will raise the resonant frequency of the antenna okay and it's a great way to shorten an antenna for a given band my question is given the same length radio on a radiator on a vertical let's use 20 feet for an argument which is too short by the way for just about any band if you just go 20 feet like this and this is 20 feet that's too short so therefore the antenna is um, capacitive so you would want to add a loading coil at the bottom to it okay would the performance results of bringing that antenna to resonance at 7 megahertz using a loading coil at the base as is done with mobile antennas such as ham sticks which is true you could create a much shorter antenna, but it's loaded at the base, so it won't cover the whole pan. Would that be much different than bringing it to resonance with a remote antenna tuner? So scratch the loading coil 
and put in right down here the remote tuner. Then you would not need to put a loading coil here or a capacitance at here. Okay, and the antenna tuner, which is just the same old uh, tuner that uh, terrible drawer. That's variable, that's variable, and that's variable. That's the usual antenna tuner you see these days. You can put the remote tuner right there and scratch the... That's his question. Can you just put the remote tuner there and scratch the extra loading? And the answer is absolutely yes. One of the nice things about it is with minimal adjustments of the antenna tuner, you can get it to cover the entire band, but it will need to adjust to cover the entire band. Okay, um, the reason I ask this actually because I wonder if a remotely adjusted screwdriver antenna would perform similarly to a remote tuner on an antenna of the same length. If so, it seems likely the remote tuner would have the advantage of faster tuning and fewer moving parts. What are your thoughts? It says thanks again for all you do. 73 from Nat Pike, W8 NAT. Okay, so. A screwdriver antenna is a short antenna, sometimes with a capacity at, and it's got a coil down here, and it's got a feed line coming in here to a point that is driven by a threaded rod so that this antenna can touch at different points on the loading coil okay and it does this with a motor and it's called a screwdriver because of the threaded rod which is a screw okay and it moves that up and down the basic screwdriver is just that you move it up and down until it you find a resonant point there are however boxes varying prices with varying features that can do that tuning for you. It can even take a signal from your mobile transmitter uh, down to the box and it will automatically tune this to the right length. There you're talking four to six hundred dollars for a box like that, okay. So you have to buy the antenna separately from the box and da 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 da. Now what he's asking is I think, could you just put the tuner, a remote tuner here? And the answer is, considering the very short length of the stinger, that you may end up needing some of the loading that the loading coil provides. I don't know. You could try it. Okay. So, um, Nate, I would say to you that, yes, you are correct. If you put the antenna at the base of the radiating element, yes, you can tune it right there, and you don't need to put in a lot of extra loading. However, if you make that antenna too short, the tuner may not be able to catch up with it, and you may have to put some loading in there to make life easier for uh, the tuner. So that's for very short. Now, if you can go 20 feet, um, that's different. It would tune on any band, but the tuning on the lower bands, 40, uh, let's see, 40, 60, 80, and so on, would be very touchy to get it just to the right point. So the longer you can make that wire, the better. Now, a short antenna, an antenna that's too short, needs inductance in order for it to tune properly. And um, if the antenna is too long, then you've got to put some capacitance in there to bring the resonant frequency back up. Now, um, a true long wire antenna, which is what these uh, remote antenna tuners are often designed for, is an antenna that is multiple wavelengths long, like 500 feet or something like that. And the long wire tuner will uh, tune that effectively. 
So there you go. Yes, you can put the remote tuner at the base of an antenna, and if you were putting an antenna outside and it's permanent and you've got radials and the ground and da 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 da, you're going to connect the the uh, tuner uh, to the K to the coax on one end, and on the other side, one side goes to the tuner, the other side goes to a ground rod or radials. Okay, I'd recommend some radials in there. It makes life easier uh, for many things. Okay, so there you have it. There you go. I hope that provides you with some interesting information. And thank you very much for being a Patreon of Ham Radio Answers. If you would like to help support this channel, you too can become a Patreon or do something similar through PayPal by going to dcastler.com support. Please also subscribe, click like, uh, comment. Um, and if you want to send a question that could be considered uh, for and ask Dave uh, column. You could do it through Patreon, as he did here, or you, you can send the question to Ask Dave, all one word, at arrl.org, and that will be sent directly to me, and I can consider it for answer either in a video, a direct answer via email, or an answer in the pages of the magazine. If I am going to do it in the magazine, it's so far out, I'll send you an email with a, kind of a synopsis of what I said and point you to uh, the future for uh, an answer. So, until we next meet, 73.